Romans chapter 5. And we'll be looking at, I'll start in verse 18. So we've been going through different individuals in the Bible and looking at you know how their interactions, um, how we can learn from their interactions with God and how it affects us, look, looking at different principles. I like the idea of looking at principles in the Bible because then as we learn the principles, we can go to whatever culture, background, situation that we're in, and we can take a principle and apply it. Uh, because it's not limited to a certain culture or governmental system or whatever it is. You know, it's, it's a principle. And so uh, you, you think of uh, something like the, the idea of, you know, not going and saying, okay, I'm going to go to this city and buy and sell. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. But the scripture says, well, you should say if it's the Lord's will. And it's a principle of when you're making plans you make sure it's going to be the god's will it's you know the, the old one we used to say you know if the lord's willing and the creek don't rise i'll see you next week or you know but but the principle is god's in control and so i've got these ideas i've got these plans but i know god's in control and so i need to make sure i'm doing it within his control it, some people will turn it into a formula you know that's not what god wanted right you know just a formula well, I'll see you later. If it's God's will, if it's, you know, I'll call you if it's God's will, you know, they'll just turn into some kind of formula or something where they, they have to say it or something like that. And it's not that. So, so principles are great. And as we've been looking at the different individuals in the Bible and we're looking at different principles, um, today I want to look at the one man, that one man, Adam, and what his action um, in the garden did for us. Um, so, Romans 5.18 says, Consequently, I'm reading from the New International Version, Just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. And this section of scripture, and we'll, we'll look at it more in depth here, but I'll start with that as the verse as a starting point. This section of scripture is, is talking about how this one man brought condemnation to everyone. Uh, condemnation for all men. The one sin, the one trespass, that one transgression brought condemnation to everyone and so death reigned sin reigned um, in the lives of men and he's talking about Adam of course and one of the things to understand uh, that is good to clarify when we think about Adam and that one man's sin is you know people will sometimes want to split hairs right you know well is eve that you know did first or you know and the, you know the, the different things like that you know maybe talk about some in the beginning god created man male and female and named them adam adam was not the man and eve was the woman adam was male and female adam that was God's design. That was God's plan. They were one. Adam, male, female. Um, so when the Bible will often talk about, you know, like something like this, this one man, he's talking Adam, male, female. That one man brought sin into the world. That one man transgressed. Uh, the two were one in the most intimate, most pure most god designed way ever possible because after that now we got so much corruption it's really hard for men and women to be one um but that it wasn't uh, uh, a time of well you know well eve ate and and there is an aspect of that we could always explore if we needed to but it, it was this one man it wasn't adam and we're letting Eve off the hook. It was male and female Adam. 
just do it. Let's just leave it at that. And so this one man, Adam, brought condemnation onto everyone. And so when Adam ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, male, female, Adam, when he ate of the tree, that remember what God said would happen when he ate, right? You'll die. Dying, you're going to die. Surely death is coming. Here's death. Now, he didn't die that day, though, did he? And, of course, you know, the, the religious answer is, well, he died spiritually. And so that's why he was physically still alive. Great. Okay. God said you're going to die. He didn't die. Now, an animal did die that day, right? Remember, God took an animal, killed it and clothed Adam with the animal. And so whenever Adam looked at himself, male and female, and they looked at each other, and they looked at how they were covering their nakedness with the skin of an animal that was killed, they realized that animal died in their place. And there was an aspect of faith that was still in existence that Abel had, in that he was able to offer that sacrifice. Remember, we looked at that. Um, just the other day where, you know, Abel's blood even still cried out. Abel was righteous. Uh, Abel's was accepted by God because of the sacrifice that he made. And he had a righteousness that came. So there is sin. Uh, you've heard it said, you know, um, you don't, you're not a sinner because you sin, but you're born a sinner, and therefore that's why you sin. Have you ever heard it put that way? So this, this condemnation, this sin that was released, this death that was released, was released when Adam ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and every single human being that has ever existed since Adam was in Adam when that happened, and every single human being died that day. Every single human being was condemned that day. Every single human being was brought into a sin relationship and a bondage to sin that day. And that is why when God created Adam in his image, Adam had children that were born in Adam's image and not so much God's image because now that corruption has been released now that sin is there now that guilt is there that condemnation and so this one man's action brought death to everybody sin to everybody and that's the world we're, we're born into What's the wages of sin? Death. Death. You earn something when you sin. Isn't it good when you work, you can earn something, right? We all earn things for different... Yeah, you earn death. The wages of sin is death. <clears throat> but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so there is this death that is reigning there is this sin that is reigning through the one man and i'll kind of back up and um look at it as it lays it out here in uh verse 12 romans 5 12 therefore just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin and in this way death came to all men because all sinned and so there and again he's building on some things he's been talking about and um i'm not going to be able to cover everything but he's this is dealing with reconciliation and how the gift of god has come but he's saying look here here you have this one man and now you have this death that's reigning through this sin through this one individual and we we're dealing with an issue that is is pretty big <laughs> right all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, all this death uh, that's walking around. Um, praise God that he knew a way to take care of it, right? Because if, if you look at the ultimate idea of the enemy coming in and bringing, what, the enemy has three things he likes to do, right? Remember what they are? He likes to kill, kill, kill and destroy. steal, <laughs> and destroy. <laughs> it's a pretty easy agenda <laughs> see something kill it <laughs> something of value steal it <laughs> steal
steal, kill, destroy. Um, uh, see anything uh, that's been built up, any kind of structure, destroy it. So uh, the enemy's got all that, but God had a way to bring glory and salvation and show his love that is just so amazing. So uh, we have this sin that entered the world through the one man. We have the death uh, that came from sin. Uh, we have um, everyone now being condemned, everyone now uh, being uh, in bondage to sin. Uh, verse 13, for before the law was given, sin was in the world, but sin was not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking the command, as did Adam, who was the pattern of the one to come. <clears throat> and the, the tension here and the, the thing that was um, missed even by a lot of the teachers of the law and those types of things. You remember they were very focused on the law and following the law and, and doing all these things was that sin was already there before the law ever came. There was already a problem. Um, now it wasn't being added to the account. Boy, how many of you like to have a, a charge card that anytime you take something out, it never goes to your account? <laughs> How many of you run that baby up? <laughs> Brand new car, hey, a house, hey, here we go. You know, I would. <laughs> I'm not too proud to admit that. <laughs> but eventually, the account's going to be charged. Eventually, it's going to be paid. And when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and then the law came in, now all of a sudden the charges started adding up. And sin takes that opportunity and releases itself and becomes more sinful and, and more wicked. But even before that time, death still reigned. Sin was still there. And this is what Paul's talking about because for his audience, they had this focus of the law and following the law and hey you know these people out here they don't follow the law they don't you know dress the way we do and they don't have Abraham as their father and they don't have the temple and they don't pray and they don't you know they're all bad people but we're okay because we have the law and all this and he's like man even before any of that there was sin there was a problem and the law didn't take care of it which is gonna be hard for them to accept right <laughs> Here we have this law. If there was a law that could bring righteousness, God would have gave it, but it couldn't. And so the ultimate, and we understand this, right? It is by faith that we are saved. The salvation comes by faith. That, and so even though death was reigning, even though people were born with this sin and this condemnation, remember Enoch. Yeah. Oh. Enoch. Sorry. Remember Enoch. He didn't die. How did he do it? How did Enoch receive eternal life without the law, without circumcision, without the promise of Abraham, without Jesus hadn't come yet? God took him home. How did he do it? He was true to God's word. How did he? Yeah. I mean, faith, right? Yeah. I mean, bottom line, faith. Faith, obedience. There was that opportunity still, even in this time of condemnation and death, there was. But how, how many of us know that most people didn't really yeah. go that yeah. route, right? You see... Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we know, definitely know you not get faith. You have to believe that God exists. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So Enoch diligently sought him. Moses was a righteous man. The Bible says he was a righteous man. Why is he righteous? Because of faith. Um, and uh, the, by the time of Jesus, everyone's thinking law, but it was always from the beginning faith. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. 
It wasn't because he was killing an animal and sacrificing it that God was accepting him. That was the act, but that wasn't why he was accepted. It was because it was done by faith. Because the obey is better than sacrifice. Remember, there's times in the Bible where God's talking about all their sacrifices they're going, and he's like, man, you might as well take pig's blood and put it on there. I don't want it. You know, don't be giving me your sacrifice. I don't want it. I'm not impressed with it because they weren't doing it with faith. You know, they became this religious act. Um, and so that tension's always been there. So this one man has brought this condemnation. He's brought this guilt. He's brought this sin. There's still that opportunity to get past. But for the most part, we don't do that. Um, and God develops uh, Abraham and brings that. So um, that's where we're at in, in this. So that even though, so verse 14 again, nevertheless, death was reigning. So the the... People were still doing things that were sinful, but there was no law, so they weren't being accounted for. It wasn't guilty. Remember, uh, Cain kills Abel, and now what would be the punishment for murdering somebody? A life sentence. Or put to death. Capital punishment would be put to death. Some countries, it's life sentence. But for God, when, he, when Cain killed Abel, he's just like, um, cursing the ground again. Ground's going to be even more cursed. Now you can't, now nothing's going to grow for you. And uh, out of his love, you know, and, and that's that love of God. And, and I think sometimes when people look at the Old Testament, they have a hard time grasping how much it resonates with God's love. Because they see this thing, you know, oh, God's telling them to wipe all these out and wipe all that out. Um, and, and his love was there from the beginning. I mean, uh, protecting Cain. And Cain's like, oh, people are going to kill me. And he puts a mark on him. No, 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 no. Don't kill Cain. Uh, you know, uh, but then after the flood, he starts increasing the knowledge of the law. And you may say, well, why didn't God do more with the law from the beginning? Because as soon as the law comes in, what happens? Sin gets more sinful. Paul talks about it in Romans. I didn't even know what coveting was until the law said, don't covet. Now, <laughs> I want to covet something. This sounds like fun. <laughs> hey, you kids, don't stick your tongue to that pole. Oh. Rainy? By faith. The man who walked by faith, God had given them the knowledge to seek him, his will first. But they couldn't have done it without the knowledge and the faith <coughs> given to them. And do you know what's really interesting is that if we seek, you know what happens? Fine. Find. If we knock, doors get open. If we ask, he answers. There, there's that activity that requires us that is where that righteousness comes from that's what real faith is there's action involved because you have to believe that god exists he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him is what the bible says so if you believe god is real i think everybody here does and he rewards those who diligently seek him what would be the best choice to do diligently seek him seek him look Seek, find, uh, look, where is he? And if seeking for God, seeking for his kingdom is something that we can be involved with and something that he encourages us to do, that means that there are places, people, things, areas, organizations where you're going to find the kingdom. So as you look around, as you seek, you're going to find certain places, certain people, certain organizations, whatever. Uh, you keep looking and you say, that, oh, there's kingdom of God. There's kingdom of God. There's, there's what God's doing. Uh, certain radio stations or TV cable, you, get, you, get, you got to get in the vibe and get in the groove. And you, you know, Find out what God's doing. You got to be vibing. Um, so... Verse uh, 15, um, you, you have this death that's still reigning. The death is still there. 
Uh, there's still all these problems, even though the law hasn't come. Verse 15, but the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? So he's like, the, the gift is better. So you have this one man, you have Adam that sins, and now there's condemnation, there's death, there's all this stuff, but the, this, the, the, the one man that comes with this gift, it, it, it's just so much better. Um, <clears throat> verse 16, again, the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses, and brought justification. So, one thing not to do, right? Don't eat of the tree, knowledge of good and evil. One sin. They con everybody's condemned. Death everywhere. And now, of course, by this time, we've got the law, and there's all kinds of trespasses, right? It's not just eating of the tree it's rape and murder and incest and backbiting and quarreling and all these i mean so many i mean they give them a list of what not to do and they'll find more ways to do what they shouldn't i mean just sin just increasing 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 but the gift is going to take care of that so one sin brought all this death all this decay all this destruction but the gift is after all of that it can bring life it can bring joy it can bring love it can bring restoration it can bring peace imagine just one sin can bring all that death and decay how great does that make that gift that's dealing with so many sins so many transgressions so many issues that are out there and it's going to take care of it and that's that's a pretty powerful gift amen i think think of it like a wound right yeah. you know one little pinprick killed them because there was some poison on it or whatever there's all this corruption all this rot but the gift is going to bring not only life to that body but multiply the body it's just power power okay um so verse 17 for if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man how much more will those who receive god's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And so you had this one trespass, this one sin, this, this one man that brought all this, but then he's like, how much more are those who receive God's provision of grace and the gift of righteousness are going to reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? He's like, if that one man can bring so much pain and misery and destruction how much more can this man bring life and again the, the issue is the wages of sin is death we have to die and there's that glory and beauty of what jesus did it and what jesus shared and the gospel message of the fact that we can die so that we can live he's like you can't do it in the flesh you can't do it on your own life you can't do it in your own power you have to die and be born again born not of flesh not of a corrupted seed not of this one that was born under sin and condemnation but of a spiritual seed holy and pure and righteous and now with this new life as you become this new creature you are set free from the bondage of sin and death you're set free from the law and all the commandments 
I write the law on your heart. Now you can walk in righteousness and holiness and life and you can experience life and you can experience an abundant life that flows out like living water that touches other people and brings health and healing and strength and victory all around you. Praise God, Dad, the gift is a bit better <laughs> than the original. Thank God for the last Adam. Adam was the first Adam. Some people call Jesus the second Adam. The Bible doesn't call him that. It calls him the last Adam. So we had the first, and then he's the one, and he's like, this is it. Here you go. You got it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go from verse 17 and following. For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through the one man, how much more will those receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, 18. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. And so here we're back at that verse that we started with. So here is that one man's transgression that brought condemnation to everybody, that brought guilt to everybody. Everybody is condemned. Everybody will die. But uh, the result of this act of righteousness of Jesus Christ has brought justification and it brings life for all men. So we live in a time of death for all men because of Adam, but we also live in a time of life and righteousness for all men because of Christ. And the only separation that there is between those two possibilities is faith acceptance right you can tell someone you are forgiven of your sins remember jesus when he told the guy that was uh crippled his friends let him down through the roof he says like he's, your sins are forgiven he didn't say i forgive your sins he's like your sins are forgiven sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven you tell someone their sins are forgiven and if they accept that gift jesus already paid the price for their sins did you know the sins of the whole world are forgiven yes. i know we have some people in our lives we don't want them to be forgiven we want god get them <laughs> they did it to me <laughs> but this and so that free gift is there because there's a there's a tension of some people are like well how can a loving god send anyone to hell how can a loving god send anyone to, to death and separation adam did that condemnation came as soon as adam ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as soon as that sin was released guilt condemnation the wages of sin death death passed to all men everybody was dead everybody was separated from god it's only by the love and mercy and grace of god that anyone has an opportunity to spend eternity with him you know what god could have done some might have said should have done <laughs> sort of like with israel remember israel when they're all rebelling in the wilderness and god's like i'm just gonna wipe them all out take you moses and well, we remember Noah, right? I'll just wipe them all out and I'll take Noah. When Adam sinned, he just wiped them all out. Oh, God's letting people go to hell. No, God's saving people. His patience, his willingness to wait, his willingness to allow things to continue is because he is saving, preserving transforming bringing into eternity men women children all around the world from every group every ethnic group every background every kindred every tribe 
and he's still doing it today. And so people want to focus on the negative or the people that aren't getting in and all this type of stuff. It's like nobody should have got in. <laughs> Praise God, though, he's giving an opportunity. And it's a free gift. I like free. I do. Even if it's something I don't want, it's free. Uh, yeah, hey, cool. Take it. I'll take it. I got free stuff laying around my house. Probably never use it. I don't know. But I got it. It was free, though. <laughs> Accept it. It's a free gift. Praise God. I'm sorry. Did you say so? So this one man, and, and, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up today is because Someone was, oh, I saw a post about hell. And they're talking about hell and whatever. I don't even remember what all they They had some whole thing worked out that they were trying to promote about that stuff. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm like, but the thing is, we were all separated from God and Adam. Yes. But God gave us a way to have a relationship. Let's, let's focus on that. <laughs> let's focus on that gospel message. Because... Jesus died even physically so that we don't have to. Our bodies now can be put on with immortality and we will reign forever. It's going to look different. Praise God for that. Amen. Our, our new bodies will look different than it does now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I know you can do better. <laughs> um, so Verse 18, again, consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of the one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. Verse 19, for just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many were made righteous. Uh, verse 20, the law was added so that the transgressions might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so when the law finally comes in, you know, years and years and years later with Moses and the law comes in, and of course, the people of Jesus' day, they're thinking the law is going to save them. This, you know, and people do that today, right? You know, well, if I go to church, you know, I'm a good person. I give money here. I do, you know, whatever they have. Everybody has some kind of idea of what is going to save them. Some kind of action, some kind of sacrifice, some kind of something or another. Uh, but they had the law. But he's like, no, the reason the law was given was to, in a sense, it increased sin. It, it, it showed us how sinful we are. But even though sin kept increasing now, because now, you know, Paul will talk about, I didn't even know about coveting until the law said don't covet. Now I started coveting. And then you start inventing new ways to covet. <laughs> I'm going to covet coveting. I don't covet as good as that guy covets, so I want to covet better. You know, I'm just, it, it, and it just spirals out of control. That release of sin, that building of sin, the reason that God did that and allowed that and, and showed us that is so we could understand how much grace he was pouring out. Because if he was only taking care of the sin of Adam, it was one sin. You know, okay, well, it was only one sin. The dude ate an apple, whatever, you know, wasn't an apple. But <laughs> dude ate the tree of knowledge, good and evil, so big, you know, get over it, God, you know. But no, he's, he's talking about this is a grace that's covering all these sins. And you start looking at the word of God, you think, look at loving your neighbor as yourself, you know, loving God. Um, sacrificing for others, and you start to look and you're going, oh man, there's sin everywhere, right? There's sin in all of our lives. It's just, it's bad. And here's this gift. Here's this obedience, this act of obedience. Here's this Savior that is able to take all of that condemnation, all of that guilt, all of that punishment, and bear it in a moment of time just a short amount of time on a cross. 
so that we don't have to experience that guilt, that condemnation, that judgment. And by dying with him, we are able to have that eternal life. And now that is why there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. For, for that law of the spirit of life sets us free from that law of sin and death. But what happens a lot of times and the way the enemy loves to use believers to propagate and to continue his work is he will bring guilt and condemnation and laws and rules and all these things into churches and church structures and in Christianity that there's so many that will fight and bicker and argue and complain and, and tell people I mean if you don't do it our way then you're not getting to heaven you don't baptize the right way you don't you don't use the right version of the Bible you don't you don't have communion the way you should have communion you don't dress the right way you don't have the right name on the door you don't practice those things that we practice and you do it all wrong you have the wrong elements when you celebrate communion and they bring all these different things and then they have individuals within churches and they start telling them well you're guilty you're condemned why are you struggling with this why are you dealing with this why do you have sin in your life and they bring condemnation they bring guilt they bring pain they bring suffering they bring weight and there's no victory and there's no power because they're not walking in and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ which is life eternal and righteousness that comes from him of course there's sin in our lives. Of course there's issues all around us. Of course we have problems. We live in a corrupt world with death all around us. Go swimming at the sewage treatment plant. You may smell a little bit when you get out. But praise God that this message of life and his spirit sets us free from all that. He washes us and he makes us clean and he makes us this new creature. <clears throat> and so we're not walking in the flesh anymore, but we're walking in the spirit. And as we walk in the spirit, then we can find other people that are walking in the spirit. We can find other members of the body. We can join together with them. And in unity, we can work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We can work out that sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit as we allow Him to control our lives. Because in the past, we let our flesh do it. Now we're gonna let the Spirit do it. And so what this one man did is nothing, Adam, compared to what this other one man did, Jesus, in bringing that salvation that freedom that victory that that ability to accept it as a free gift It'd be better if we could just you know have some kind of checklist or something or, you know what do i have to do it's a free gift you're forgiven uh no no you don't understand what i did <laughs> you're telling god he doesn't understand what you did that means you don't understand what he did he died. God died. Life died. Light went dark for you. <laughs> that's, that's pretty big. Uh, and so we accept that, that free gift. Um, praise God. I think I shared what I'm supposed to. Anybody have anything you want to share? <coughs> So that was just a little look into one man. And, and the, again, the reason I wanted to look at that today was just because of the idea that I hear sometimes people talking about, oh, God, why would God, you know, torment someone or send them to some eternal hell? Or why would God, you know, it's like, we're dead. I, you know, I'd hear, I'd hear people talk about a, a dead and dying world, you know. 
And I'm like, I, I always say, no, it's a, it's a, it's already dead. It's a dead, decaying world, is what we live in. It's all death. But Jesus came and brought life, and now as that one seed that fell into the ground and died, now can be life and multiply. <laughs> And so we have an opportunity in a dead world to be alive. And with that life to bring life to others, with that life to bring food to others, with that life to bring healing to others, with that life to bring water to others, with that life. And that is that message. That is the, the basis. And so I feel like I just shared a little teeny little inter introduction. find that like life because I like I don't know I've always had this in my mind that like people can live their whole lives without actually living mm -hmm. and I, I have a lot of non-Christian friends I majority of my friends are not Christian because I go to a public school and um they're very like anti-God and they're not anti any other religion but they're very anti-God and I think it's because they see it the most and like people they can actually see God so it's like the more anti-God they are the more they can like push that away but they don't see other gods so they don't have to be anti sure whatever the other gods are and so I think that's really important that like they're like oh God sends people to hell so he's the worst but like they don't yeah, or, or why, why is why are they need dealing with all these child molesters and all these yeah, you know and stuff like Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's it's easy for people not to see, and it's like that's all it is. It's all child molesters and hell and death and decay and evil, and that's all it is. But God, and He sent His Son, and then, and so that's that's that little leaven that leavens the whole lump. That's that little seed. That's why, well, that's why that kingdom of God and that concept that Jesus was talking about, about that small thing, all around it's all bad, it's all evil, it's all death, it's all corruption, it's all sin, it's all this. But now kingdom of God, okay, it can grow and it can build and it's a body. And as the body grows together and loves one another and the joints and ligaments join and it begins to move and work and do the things that it can do, it can be a transforming power. And I believe that ultimately God is wanting to have a strong body that is a conquering body and brings life and restoration. Man's had plenty of time to try it on his own and he's tried all his own different ways and his own different things, his own ideas and he's done some pretty cool things and he's gone a lot away. Now let's try it God's way. Why don't we have a bunch of people that are following the Holy Spirit and walking in his love and find out how we can actually feed all the people of the world that we should be able to. Well, what's the issue? Why are there people starving to death around the world? Because of corruption. You have a corrupt government system over here and another corrupt government system over here and another corruption over here. And you can't get the food to the people because of all the corruption. But the body of Christ and the kingdom of God that is not corrupt, still have to deal with corruption, could do those things. And I believe that's what God wants us to do. That's what um, the Holy Spirit's wanting to do to have a body that is so strong that it's going around the world taking care of a lot of the issues that are going on. Not a country that is run by some governmental system of Christians. No. But individuals that are part of the body of Christ working together, loving one another, pouring their resources in the body of Christ in a way that actually works on meets and takes care of the actual needs rather than just wasting time money energy and saying they're doing it and not getting anything done praise god heavenly father i love you for all that you are doing and i thank you for the uh, your word and i just ask father right now that you just uh, bless us as we leave here to help us to Focus on you, be prepared for the community service next week at 9 o'clock, and uh, be there to just see what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen.